Hi, I'm Kushbu Razdan, and this is Foreign Correspondence Talk Series 2024, an initiative by the Association of Foreign Press Correspondents, where we invite members of the foreign press community to talk about their work story and experiences. And today I have with me New York-based journalist from Sylvania, Robert Pedros. Robert, thank you so much for joining us. How are you doing? Yeah, fine. How are you, Kush? I'm very well. I know you're very busy. Uh, you know, IMF meetings are happening. It's uh, it's a lot of work. A lot of dignitaries are here. But thank you so much for, you know, taking the time. And I will not take much time of yours. So I would just start away. And I wanted to ask you how you became a journalist. I uh, I always ask people because most of the times, like at least for me, it was uh, an accident. So if you could just describe, you know, your journey as a journalist from Sylvania, to becoming a you know US UN correspondent uh, in New York how did that happen yeah well it was by chance for me too i mean i was studying political science back in slovenia and then my friend who was a journalism student uh, asked me to go with her to the slovenian press agency they had interviews they needed new people mm -hmm. and i said okay I'll, I'll accompany you and then we had interviews and they hired me they didn't hire her because they they needed a sports uh, journalist, and I was playing volleyball in the Slovenian League back then. I had some connections, so they used me. Yeah. So she was kind of upset with me, but I said, okay. And then I started working part-time with them, and later uh, later uh, it became uh, permanent. Uh, but uh, in Slovenia, I was working as a sports journalist, mostly. Mm -hmm. And what made you move to the U.S.? Yeah, it was a girl. I went uh, to see a girlfriend. Uh, she she was a flight attendant here in New York. And uh, that was in, wow, back in 96. And mm -hmm. I saw the city. I liked it. Uh, went back to work, talked with my director, told him, uh, listen, I'm moving to New York. So if you want to deal uh, and have a correspondent, uh, we can do something about it. Otherwise, I'm going to do something else. So he said, yeah, we're going to need you because Slovenia just got elected to the Security Council for the first time. That was for, I don't know, 1998 till 2000. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had a initial deal for two years. And then all other things started happening and I'm still here. Yeah. So how was that experience of, you know, first going to the United Nations? You covered the United uh, you know, Nations Security Council, I think, for the first time in 1998. How was that experience? Did it change? Like, did it just shook you like, oh, my God, now I'm in this international space and... <laughs> I'm so far away. How was that experience? Yeah, yeah, it was it, it, it was kind of funny. It was interesting, but uh, that was that was before September 11, 2001, when everything changed, and uh, it was it was kind of easier. I mean, the the journalists were treated almost the same as the diplomats. Uh, we could enter uh, <laughs> through any doors. You know, everything was. I don't know, and. Uh, there wasn't that many journalists back then as now, and uh, you still had more time to report. You could, you could, um, I don't know, research the issues. And uh, now it's completely different. Uh, my work for press agency, it's like I have to be out there in a second. Back then, I had more time. And uh, the, the interesting thing was, yeah, uh, I don't know. Uh, that was the first time I was a sports journalist back there in Slovenia. Okay, I was working for some newspapers. Uh, uh, on the foreign policy too, but then this was completely different. I mean, uh, you had to change your clothes. I mean, <laughs> you had to come in in a suit and tie. I mean, otherwise they didn't take you seriously. So that that, that was the first big difference. Uh -huh. So did it change the way you looked at the world? Because when when we are in our in our own country, we look at everything from our you know narrow perspective of like mm -hmm. our own country. Did that change how you how you see the world now? Yeah, it changed completely. I mean, Slovenia is a small country in Europe and uh, it's not very racially diversified. You know, I mean, uh, you have mostly white people there and 90% uh, Catholic. So mm -hmm. that was the environment I was growing up. OK, it was Yugoslavia, but uh, I didn't travel. Uh, Slovenia was part of Yugoslavia until the wars in the 90s. And uh, uh, but I didn't travel much around. I was in the Yugoslavian army that was mandatory. Uh, but otherwise, uh, still, it was, you know, mostly white European people. Uh, and here in New York, uh, it was complete diversity. I mean, and nobody's from here. Everybody's from somewhere else. Everybody has the accent. I loved it uh, the first second I was here. Mm -hmm. Did you cover any sport, sports events uh, while you were in the U.S.? Have yeah. 
basketball. Yeah, we have, uh, although we are a small country, <laughs> we are surprisingly very good in sports. So we have a few players in the NBA. Now we have a big star, Luka Doncic, that plays for Dallas Mavericks. And then we have one guy in the National Hockey League and we got some other NBA players. So, yeah, usually I cover it whenever those guys come to New York. I have to go to Madison Square Garden or Brooklyn or wherever, Jersey, and, and cover the game. So. Mm -hmm. so you you know this whole balance of uh, you know on one side you're covering the united nations you're covering heavy you know hardcore news and then uh, maybe the next week you are covering a sporting event how do you balance that and you know how do you switch from like a sports journalist to a hardcore political journalist does that like does something to your brain <laughs> yeah well i try to joke all the time so it's the same. no okay uh I was a sports journalist before I was into the sports. I was playing uh, semi-professionally, so that thing is easy. You know, <laughs> I know how guys think and this locker room talk, whatever. So I can do that uh, really, really easily. The politics at the beginning was kind of, you know, having interviews with presidents, uh, ministers, I don't know, ambassadors. That was kind of kind of hard at the beginning, but. Uh, surprisingly people are nice and uh you know they they took me uh, uh they didn't complicate things so much you know and uh i was studying political science so i knew <laughs> a little bit about that you know although it's complicated i mean i thought i knew english and uh, the first first time i came here i was trying to order something in mcdonald's and i didn't understand what the person was asking me so <laughs> i had to learn english all, all again yeah <laughs> So tell me something, uh, you know, you have had such a, a vast experience as a journalist from Europe to to the U.S. Uh, how does uh, how do you see digital media? You know, d uh, when you know, when you started back then, it wasn't social media wasn't such a big deal. How do you, yeah. are you are you active? Are you active? Does it help your work? How do you see digital media and, you know, the the role of digital media in the life of journalists, uh -huh. especially international journalists? Well well, when I started, there were no cell phones. So <laughs> when September 11 happened, I didn't have a you know a smartphone to take pictures. So whatever, <laughs> I mean, it was completely different. And uh, but it was starting. I know my older colleague when I came here, he was working for Television Slovenia, and he told me, "Oh, you kids, you're so lucky because you have internet now, right?" It was still dial-up internet, you know, this American online thing that took like half an hour before you got connected. <laughs> so right. it was, but still, it was completely different because they had to go to the, <laughs> to the libraries. I don't know, you know, they had to go around. But I told them, well, I think it was easier for you because you could write anything you want and nobody was controlling <laughs> you or checking you. And now, sometimes, you know, my family back in Slovenia know uh so uh, what happens in new york before i know you know <laughs> because you cannot cover everything so uh digital media i don't know uh for me because i'm old uh it's a mixed blessing uh on one hand i don't know uh, it gives you access to information faster and on the other hand the problem is every idiot can express itself himself to everyone and uh people i don't know sometimes they believe uh what I learned in those years that people would believe conspiracy theories or any nonsense before they would uh, believe facts or check facts or something. So I think the, the role of journalism is very important if we stay true to our profession and really check things, look for the background and try to explain it. But uh, I don't know. I'm not too optimistic. Yet. Are you active on social media? Uh, not too much. I mean, uh, as I told you, I'm all the time checking Facebook. So <laughs> everybody's laughing at me because everybody's on, what is the other thing, Instagram or, uh, Instagram yeah, or TikTok. I have a niece, she's on TikTok. And uh, I'm really angry sometimes because she believes everything that's up there. So <laughs> I'm having a hard time to explain it to her. Yeah. So uh, how do you, I, I'm, I'm curious, like how do you stay connected with what's happening back home? You are doing international news here. You are covering so many things at the same mm. time. How do you well, connect since, with your audience? Yeah, it's not hard because since I work for the Slovenian press agency, so, uh, you know, I, we cover everything for Slovenian media. Uh, it's like Associated Press, but only on a smaller scale, just for the Slovenian media market. So every morning I get up, you know, I go through the news and I see everything. And then I have contacts with the colleagues, friends, and uh, we talk about things, sir. Mm -hmm. And how how has your coverage been of of you know the the invasion in Ukraine? How how is uh, how are the diplomatic relationship between Slovenia and and the U.S. Uh, ever since the war began? 
Uh, well, uh, Slovenia is part of European Union. The policy of European Union uh, towards the war in Ukraine is clear. Uh, it's uh, on the level with the United States, so everybody's condemning the aggression. So, But uh, the funny thing is, uh, quite a lot of Slovenians uh, are kind of a maybe, <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> on the Russian side. Well, I wouldn't say it on the Russian side, but... Uh, Whenever you hear some ex-politician or politician calling for peace right away in Ukraine, uh, then you kind of have a fishy feeling that they might be uh, pushing the Russian propaganda. Because if you would have peace right away, then then uh, I don't know, then Ukraine would have to give up a lot of territory or something, and uh, that wouldn't be fair. Is is Russian propaganda a real problem back home? Not that much. Uh, the, uh, Slovenians are kind of I must say I'm proud of Slovenians because they, they're mostly common sense people. Mm -hmm. uh, that was that was that was uh, obvious back in Yugoslavia too, and uh, and afterwards too. Yeah, are, are, mostly, mostly are common sense. Are people in support of Ukraine's cause, or are they nostalgic? Yeah, about yeah, mostly, mostly, mostly in support of Ukraine's cause. Uh, big majority, but uh, there's still a percentage of population that, <laughs> that's kind of. Is it the kind of older people who who are more tilted towards the old times? Mixed. And uh, mixed. It's a mix. It's a mix. Young, uh, young people in Slovenia, they're kind of leftists. Uh, and then you can see that uh, at the, 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 the current conflict in Gaza, mm -hmm. uh, you have demonstrations in support of Palestinians every, every day, uh, but uh, not so much uh, uh, expression of support for, for, for Israel. I see. That's interesting because uh, you you said a lot of uh, population is Catholic. Do you also have Muslim population back home? Uh, yes, uh, some leftovers from the times of Yugoslavia because uh, Yugoslavia had like six republics and the Bosnia had a lot of uh, Muslim population, the majority Muslim population. And then back in Yugoslavia, Slovenia was most developed of the republics and a lot of people from other republics came to work in Slovenia and a lot of them stayed, uh, you know, created families and everything. So, yes, that, uh, it's uh, mostly people from from Bosnia. Because we don't hear much about Slovenia, so I'm just going to ask one more question. How do people perceive the United States uh, in Slovenia back home, especially after after what's happening in Gaza? Has this has yeah. this perception changed? Uh, it's funny. I mean, whenever I go home, they all know more about the United States than I do. So I usually keep quiet and listen. Really? <laughs> why is uh, that? Uh, excuse me sorry why, why is that curiosity about knowing more about us why do the thing knowing about us is more important oh you know but, uh yugoslavia was a socialistic country so you know we all looked up to united states like wow this is something you know i mean <laughs> this is the country where you're free you can do this and that and <laughs> uh but but yugoslavia was kind of open but still you know it was still socialistic country so everybody looked up to united states but then when we got independent uh we tried to get into nato right away because slovenia is so small uh, we can survive by ourselves so we have to go to we have to go to alliances and be part of something like eu and nato and then there was a big push to go into eu and nato uh, then finally we got into nato but then it's changed it's like now it's like 50 50. Hmm. Uh, there's not such a big support and everybody's critical about uh, u.s politics uh, uh, it doesn't matter which way the politics goes but you can hear a lot of criticism here did uh, did uh, did people like trump when trump was in power how was their uh, reaction to what trump <laughs> used to say? because back in my country people used to enjoy trump it was kind yeah. of a source of entertainment yeah uh entertainment like you say a lot of entertainment yes yeah. <laughs> some of them some of them supported him because he's married to a slovenian uh that was a big factor and uh, that was the big factor that he got a lot of votes in ohio or some other states i mean ohio has cleveland has a lot of slovenia <laughs> big slovenian minority over there and those were mostly all democrats and then when they heard that he's married to a slovenian and uh, they all voted for him yeah <laughs> So is Melania Trump, you know, popular back home? Are people happy that she's married to Donald Trump? <laughs> no, 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 she's not popular. Uh, I don't know why, what happened, but uh, she never kept uh, too much contact, you know. Uh, 
I mean, everybody was expecting when Trump got elected that, oh, now Slovenia is going to get more important, it's going to get more access to the White House and everything. But nah, no, nah. <laughs> she never had any meeting with, uh, not even with Slovenian minority here or, or, or any Slovenian politician, unless it was part of the official thing, like, uh, you know, when they have at the... At the UN General Assembly every year, when the American president has this reception for all the chief of delegations, and this is the only time. But before, before he got elected, uh, they were hosting a lot of things, uh, a lot of receptions uh, at the Mar-a-Lago, and uh, Slovenian diplomats and politicians and businessmen, they were guests there, yeah before he became president but afterwards uh, i don't know i mean maybe what i hear is uh she didn't like the reporting of slovenian media too much because they were too critical so, <laughs> so far, to, are, are, what is the perception of slovenians when you know they think about the upcoming election are they are they watching it closely are they skeptical about uh, trump coming back Oh, you mean U.S. elections, right? Yeah, everybody. I mean, not just Slovenia. I think the whole world is watching very closely every U.S. election. <laughs> I was covering, wow, Oof. Clinton. Okay, I came here at the end of the Clinton second term. So I, I covered a lot of elections and uh, there was always big interest. But with Trump, it's huge interest everywhere, even in Slovenia. And yes, people are watching and uh, they're really... He has a lot of legal problems. They're really skeptical that uh, he's going to get, uh, I don't know, maybe jail time or any other. Uh, they think he's going to get out of it. And a lot of things, majority, I must say, uh, they think he's going to get elected again. Very interesting. Very interesting. Thank mm -hmm. you so much for this, uh, you know, uh, candid chat that we had. And I I, I think I, I've i known more about Sylvania now before, before talking yeah. about it. Um, it's just that, uh, you know, we are so focused on these bigger countries and EU, actually, I think Europe, we cover as a, as a big continent, as, as one large piece of the continent. But there are so many small countries that are so interesting historically and, and culturally yeah. and as well. It's a small one, but interesting one. Okay, so I would just like to clarify this. Yes, majority of Slovenians think that Trump will win, but that doesn't mean that majority supports him. I mean, a lot of them are afraid that he's going to win again, <laughs> because what that means for Europe, uh, you know, uh, it's a different thing. Yeah. So they're skeptical. If he comes back, it's going to be maddening again. Yeah. Well, if you are not working in journalism or in politics or anything, yes, you can follow it like an entertainment. Yeah, he's a very entertaining guy. <laughs> he could be the next president, so fingers crossed. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for your time, and I'll see you soon in New York. You're welcome, Kush. <laughs> Have a great Bye -bye. day. Bye.